Hey guys, and how's it going? Well, this video is going to be a little different. We're not going to wrench on rusty, beat up junk. We'll do that, you know, tomorrow. But for today, we are going to uh, get into lifts. Judging by the title of the video, you probably already know the direction we're going. So I've been in this garage for about a year and a half, and I have a couple of lifts that are in here. These little table lifts or handy lifts for motorcycles and power equipment work awesome for what they are. This space over here has like eight foot ceilings. And I also grabbed a used Snap-on, I think Snap-on just puts their name on it, lift that is uh, called the Mid-Rise Lift. And it's okay. A couple of things I do not like about it is it rocks pretty good when it's all the way up if you don't have a perfectly flat floor. And the fact that it has a safety, but the safety only clicks in only in the high position. The one I have bolted to the floor at home has a safety that locks into three positions. So this one is, I'm always a little bit leery. And when you're welding on something like this, you know, you're, you're halfway up, you're kind of on a creeper underneath trying to work on it, working on the lip on the backside or anything underneath it. And of course you ine inevitably get the little burns going in your ears and down your pockets and in your socks and you know, that kind of stuff that all those feelings that <laughs> let you know that you're alive. Well, anyway, this shop, although it has eight foot ceilings over here, if you look in this section, they go up 25 feet underneath this girder right here. So I've been looking into getting a different lift for the shop and I was uh, watching, well, I'll give you a backstory first. The one I was kind of looking at, I wanted something that was movable and they had what was called a single post lift. And that looks like a pallet jack for the most part and it goes underneath and you can pick a car up. You got four uh, pads that you put under the car, you lift it up and you can actually set it back down on jack stands. You can lift about, I think about six feet up. I could not find a review, good or bad, on any of those. And I've been looking at them for about six months. So that did not give me a very good feeling about them. And then Vice Grip Garage, I don't know if you guys watch that channel, awesome channel. He did about a month ago a video on a lift setup that he grabbed, which is a four post lift that is not bolted to the floor and can be moved around. And it's really kind of what I was looking for. So I decided to contact that company and uh, I made a purchase. That purchase is here, I have to go get it. So I say we go hop in the other truck with the trailer that's already set up. We'll drag that here and uh, see what it takes to assemble it. And from there we kind of go into the, you know, all the nitty gritty about it. On his, they had the company come out and assemble it. For me, we are gonna go do our best to assemble it. See how that works out for us. Time to go get our little prize. We gotta figure out where to check in. Made it back, no problems. Went to the shipping terminal. I was all done. They, hey, they had it on the trailer within 10 minutes and probably another 10 minutes to tie it down. You're probably asking yourself, why did I put it off set like that? You are, aren't you? You're saying, why don't you put that in the middle? It'd be a lot easier to tie down, It'd be a lot safer. Well, the uh, forks, there's a forklift right there. That fender comes off and the weight of that and the capacity of the forklift are pretty close to each other so if i had to go try to get it on its little tippy toes and get it up the forklift to be doing wheelies and that kind of stuff although it would make for good video uh, i really would not like to drop this thing and smash it before i get it set up and ready to use anyway that fender comes off we're going to go take that fender off hopefully get in between the tire the two tires with the forks grab a dead center of it be able to pick it up elevate it and pull the trailer out think it's going to work let's go find out
I got it uncovered. There's the lift that slides on the rails. Looks like it's already completely assembled. We don't have to do anything for that. And then the lift itself, after all the skins are taken off, all the cardboard was taken off, that looks like it's packaged quite nice too. The ends are just for uh, shipping. They have nothing to do afterwards, but maybe we can make a nice table out of them. The gray piece, they make for a nice table. So the instructions are supposed to be in that box right there. Let's get them out. So what this is, is a 9,000 pound lift. This is the uh, heavier of the two. There's two different models and uh, I have the XLT. And it gives you another 10 inches of height and I believe it is wider also. So it goes for larger vehicles. They're both 9,000 pounds though. So I thumbed through it real quick and essentially the idea is you're gonna make a letter H laying on the floor, which is gonna be two uprights and a cross. Two uprights and a cross, you're gonna set one on the floor put it together, stand it up, put one on the floor, put it together, stand it up, put a ramp on it, put a ramp on it. Hopefully it goes that fast, but <laughs> I'd be a little bit more in detail than that. But anyway, that's the uh, the main gist of what we need to go do. As far as the company itself, I contacted them. They did not contact me. I uh, liked the product that they had and that's why I chased down this one. They did not give this lift to me. I did buy it. They were good to me as far as uh, uh, working on a price. But uh, I bought this lift, it is not a freebie. All right, the way I see it, we got six bolts to take off to take that top ramp out, which is gonna be two on the end, two on the other side, and two in the middle. We should get that top ramp free. I'm just gonna lift that, pull that to the side, and set it back down again, so we can get to the innards and get some of the other pieces out of the stack. Oh, and I forgot to mention, you're supposed to have two people doing this, but we're gonna do it with one person. That should make it entertaining. set that one down on a dolly, move it out of our way, then we, now we can have access to everything else. I need to put them on this uh, little buggy that I have, a little hydraulic jack, that I don't have to worry about teeter-tottering. I can kind of grab somewhere in the middle and I can move them around. It should be eight in assisting, eight in the bedding. Well, other than the uh, big ramps, all the other pieces, you're pretty much manhandled by yourself. They're not, uh, terribly heavy. And I'm just taking a little bit of time jockeying these into position with my little trusty cart. Seems to work better than the forklift just because it's smaller. Kind of whittle stuff around and drive it where you want. And if you can't clear something, just go a little higher. <laughs> I'm gonna go set those two up on the floor and we'll get that cross beam set up and I'm lined up to it.
Well, normally you'd have another person, and then each one would grab a gray pole and stand them up. But I don't have that capacity. So I'm gonna wedge some wood in there so I can lift from this piece, have it hit up against here, not have them slide right on the rest of the way up. These locks do not work in that direction. They only work in that direction. I got the little nylon guides in there and one of them has a notch cut in it where all the other ones don't. That one with the notch goes where the locks are so it stays out of harm's way. That should be the easy one and each one that we put in <laughs> should get progressively harder. Two on the back side. Getting snug, and this one actually not that bad. I expected much more of a fight. Do the same to the other side. Now it feels like I'm getting somewhere. While I'm still over here with this jack, I'm gonna lift it back up, lock the safeties out, and drop this bar till it's about probably two from the bottom as far as the holes are concerned, so that I can use this same setup to grab the uh, tables or the uh, what do you want to call them runners ramps, platforms, <laughs> so that I can put it on the buggy, come over here, and I have to bolt to the face of that, but I need to be uh, in the realm of the height of where that can work. that noise outside is a little bit of rain so these are runways <laughs> it's a proper terminology for them I took one and I laid it out to get an idea where the second goal post is gonna get set up and I just threw some tape on the floor to get an idea where I want to try to uh, roughly shoot for when I stand it up
Next is the runway. So the plane is, that's already on wheels. I'm gonna roll it back under the middle, but on an angle, probably something like what it is right there so that I can clear both sides of it and I'm gonna put it on the truck and get it up above them. Hopefully be able to turn it sideways, set it back down nice and gingerly, get two bolts on that side, two bolts on the other side, and then we're safety zone. Now, <laughs> That's the plan. Let's see how that, well that works for us. That's looking a little bit better, a little bit safer. It is bolted on both sides, so now we don't have to worry about the uh, blended bridge falling down. And I'm gonna go knock out the other side. I think I'm just gonna go and get it done without filming it, you get the idea. You already saw that one, right? So, same thing, but faster, because I already know what I'm doing, kinda. And by the magic of video, second ramp is installed. Keep calling it a ramp. Runway. Little sliders I put in earlier, there's a shelf on the bottom they, they run into so they can't fall out of the bottom. But the top needs to be encapsulated so they have these little caps. Quickly just screw on and hold them down from sliding out. So put eight of those on, two per. Hey guys, it's actually the next evening. I went to about 1.30 in the morning and I just got so tired I was done. Plus I had to go to work in the morning, so. Uh, we're picking it in back up. Most of the metal work is already done. All the big heavy pieces are put in place. We have a cylinder that is underneath this side that has four cables going to it. They need to be cut free and stretched out and run through some pulleys and up to their respective poles for lifting. And uh, what else we got? We got the slider in the middle. Uh, the motor and the oil tank hangs on this one. We need to go fill that. A couple of hydraulic lines, I believe, is what we have left. And I think we're pretty close. Not sure how dark it's going to be under here, but you can see all the cables hanging. And then you just have tie wraps holding them. So I'm going to go take a little bit of time. We'll go cut all those free. And again, they're going to run to their prospective homes. You can see how the system works. There's a big hydraulic ram. Probably looks like it's uh, about eight feet long, maybe. And then each cable gets tied to the cylinder. So they all have to visit. Pull? Pull to raise or pull to lower? <laughs> we have to be stretched out. We're probably gonna have to go stretch out the cylinder to get the slack in the cables to run up. So this has a single-sided cylinder. Fluid goes down on this side and it would collapse the cylinder because this would be the all the way up position. So the other end of the cylinder where this connection is, is open. I'm gonna try pushing some air in there. It should 
allow that cylinder to go pop out. Should. Let's see what happens. That's enough, but we'll start with that. I just had to take the hardware off the cable, wiggled it through there, zigzagged, and ran it all the way up. Got about an inch of thread showing on the top side of it. Not sure if you can see this or not. This is kind of where I'm using it as my guide because it's the guide. <laughs> so H's are set up, ramps are on, blocks are in for the nylon stops. We put those on, another ramp on, cap is in place. We ran the cables through, and there's a there's a couple of locks. I'll, I'll show them later. A couple of different setups. Got them pulled through, got them bolted. Now we can go and jump on the safety release levers. Let's go with quick gander on that stuff. Good, <laughs> let's go put that together. And that would be these guys. I found scissors is the best for all the packaging that's on here. Although I've already lost my good pair, I put them down somewhere and can't find them. So I have these ultimate ones that look like a sheer for sheer and cheap. And here's the two rods. And they have to go in. There is a black rod inside the frame that this has to get threaded into and attached to. Can't spin this one. And I looked at the instructions. It said, loosen up this bolt. I'll just do that. There we go. Back in the front setup. So, there's a spacer behind it and basically a con rod in the middle, a black con rod that's already built into here. You basically thread them all the way in so that there's no play from side to side. The jam nuts are still loose underneath. And then we're gonna go take this hardware. And these are gonna get bolted to this so that when you pull and you push down, Right. You, you would push down, it'll pull the safety out. Right now it's being held by the other ones from the cable, the one above it. But if you can see that one moving over there. So I'm going to do that all four corners all the way around. 
and then I think we have to find where it's neutral and then just tighten those two GM nuts down below so the front and the back half of the lift are locked together. So this one I just bolted up, but the other one's off a little bit. So I'm gonna go, I cracked the nuts loose. So I'm just gonna spin it so we're roughly, I'm in the center of that one also. You're pulling all of them even at the same time, you know. Yeah, so I just adjusted them so that they all kind of fit in their natural position all the way in on the, on the brakes or locks, we should call it. And did the same on the other side and then there's a, a nut on each end on these rods going in, tighten them up. I feel like they're working fine. I also, while I was under there, I stuck the oil line out through and the nut is still tight on it, but that's where the oil fill. And this is the mount, I do believe, for the oil pump. And just got four screws on top of I'll, I'll skip you that part. I'm going to go hang it off of this one right here with four screws and then we'll get the pump on it. Next, I think we'll leave that empty for now. If one of you would uh, be so gracious to hold one end of that while I get the harbor started, it will probably make that process a lot easier. Well, that was easier than expected. I think you could rotate it. You possibly could put it this way and have it hang in front of the lift too. I'm not sure which is going to be more out of the way. I'm planning on tucking it in behind me and there's poles. I'm planning to have it sit probably right about here. There's poles here anyway, so I'm, I'm not sure which direction will be uh, more beneficial. Actually, I'm starting maybe in the front. Because if it's in the front, I gotta be able to grab both handles and that would make it so I'd have to grab one here and go around the other side for the other one. Slight adjustment. <laughs> Hold on. All right, got fluid in. First time plugging it in. I hope this extension cord is heavy enough. It's a 20 amp setup, so I might kick the breaker. It's got air in the sonar and it's got slack on the lines. So it's gonna probably bump around a little bit the first time. That whole cylinder is full of air. You know, levels are down. Hey, noise. The only thing I haven't done yet is I still have the bolts loose. I you guys see them on the tops. I still have those loose. I'm going to set it all the way down on the floor. And when it's down there, I'm going to set the slack in the cables just so they're evenly tight. I'm not quite sure what it said. It said leaving an inch of threads on each one and adjust it later. So that's what I'm going to go try accomplish now and see if that uh, does what it's supposed to. It seems like they're clicking all four of them at the same time though. It seems like they're all kind of popping at the same time. So I think I'm pretty close.
two on the far end. I'm gonna tighten them up a little bit. They're looser than the other two cables. Yeah, I probably gave about three or four turns on each one of those to get the slack out of them. They feel like they're pretty even all the way around now. Now I got uh, four covers that go and cover all these linkages, these pinch points. Keep your fingers out of there, you know. But I wanted to make sure all that hardware was working okay and there was no issues. It seems fine. I'll throw those on and we have a couple of sections to go in the middle. A couple of little uh, jack points to go on there. Let me take care of that. Almost there. See how it does with no air in the system now. Keep that lifted all at the same time. This looks like I might hurt if I dress, drop it. Get my alignment right. Two. Yeah. I got this in the channel. So we could change, make different heights for them. Stack them. Let's go hook air to it. See what that does. I don't know if there's oil in this or not yet. We're gonna find out, I guess. Pump is this way. All right. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Does it show? Do I have air on? I got air. You should probably read what it says as far as the tension. You have to push down harder, me. There we go. <laughs> That's shaking it. See how high up it goes. Well, that's pretty decent, huh? That's got to be 20 inches or so. Man, that'll get the wheels off the ground on a car, huh? I guess you lift up probably on this safety. Yeah. It's got stairs on the side of it and then just hit the release and it should drop down. Ain't that, ain't that just snazzy? They do that. Gets you to where you want to get on the suspension, I guess. Yeah, that work out pretty cool. Yeah, it's got a little retractable arms. What a neat little piece of equipment that thing is.
perfectly in the middle. Up, you said. Mark Wonder. Work that puppy. Trucks, I think, 5,600 pounds. Well, that's up there a ways. I'm 6'2", my hand's stretched all the way out. And uh, I can't even touch it. <laughs> I, it's about the height of the lift I can go grab. Again, that's you know more than I need necessary, but who knows, it maybe comes a time. Actually, probably when you park in a car underneath it, if you have a van or something you wanna go underneath, you have the clear span to do so. I gotta do a little bit of tweaking on the lift. All three locks locked in except for this one which is just a hair out so that cable has to get pulled up just a little bit more and it'll click all together at the same time i'm gonna go drop her down to a, a work height and we'll take a peek underneath here Yeah, that one touches first. Yeah, let's go take a look at my rusty truck. We bought this one about three or four years ago. And the frame was rotted out and here's where I did the patches. They all still look like they're doing good. I was told that that was gonna rot apart in six months. It not be any good. You know, it's 40 something thousand miles later. I think she's doing just fine. There's some patches on the other side too, on on this side. No, they, my exhaust is leaking. Let's go see if we can. Oh, there's your issue. <laughs> that might be a problem. <laughs> it looks like I was there with a MIG welder before too. I can see wire on the inside. Yeah, you might have to break down a biomuffler. How's the rest of it looking? I undercoated this with oil too, barn chain oil. You, and so I, I only did it the one time, but you can kind of see, like right there you can scrape it off. Got some dirt built into it. And it just saves it afterwards, it pickles it. You can see where it's all kind of dry up here. It needs another shot. It's not rotted, it's rusty, but it's not rotted. Yeah, it's not. Nice, and how much easier is it gonna be? Imagine if I was welding this now, instead of being on a creeper on my back, working on this. Oh. A little spot right there. A pass repair. Nice. Nice, I'm loving this. And you got the little tables to work off of too. So this one, it's got a couple of levers. I gotta turn the light down there. Let it get. So you got some levers you can flip out. And this roll, wherever you're kind of going working, and I think you could actually jack off of this. Keep the jokes to yourself. And you lock it in place so it doesn't slide. That's the standard one that comes with it, and there's some drip trays, some plastic. So if you're gonna park a car underneath this, there's plastic trays that you can put in here too in case you park something ratty on top that drips. You don't wanna get it on the car below. And again, of course, we have this one, which we just roll underneath. To where the frame pieces are. Put them out, run that cylinder up, and lift the, that axle right off the ground. Work on that from there. Are you doing suspension work or anything? How cool is that? Man, this is gonna make my life so much easier. I tell you, when you get older, um, you really appreciate this stuff. Your body talks to you and tells you how much you can and can't do 
where you go, you do something for a day and then you gotta go take a day off the next day just cause you beat yourself up so much. So hopefully this kind of thing, by doing this, it takes the fatigue away from you and allows you to continue. This is the old, I'm 56. And uh, you know, I'm planning on going till I'm 75, hopefully. And doing things like this, you know, this lift will last me 20 years. And it's just how much more I'll be able to get done by doing so. And how much even just work in general that you get done faster without beating yourself up. If you're trying to make money, you know, that uh, the capacity of doing stuff. Like if I was crawling around on the floor, see if you're doing the exhaust on this. Crawling around on the floor, you spend two and a half hours doing it. You put up on a lift here, you probably do it in about 45 minutes just because it's just so much easier to get around and do stuff. It's actually holding up pretty good. I had to do a bunch of welding on the, uh, these should come off. I just got in a hurry. I did a bunch of welding back here in the trailer hitch too. The box for it. That all looks like it's holding up fairly well too. Awesome. And then some with the room. Probably got a, another eight to the roof of the bus. Well, two trucks can definitely fit underneath each other. Oh boy. Let's go see if it can pick itself off the ground. Slow down. Slow down. Awesome. I gotta move all that junk out of the way. I gotta move that cabinet. work out just fine I'm gonna kick the motorcycle lift over about three feet more that direction it's got plenty of room anyway and then do the same with the bench that way the bench can be used on both sides if I'm working on the lift I could work off of that and if I'm working on the motorcycle I could work on the other side so for right now that's where it's gonna stay I'll deal with that stuff at another time because again it's late and I'm hungry that worked out pissa A little components stay down there. No hardware was an issue. Everything kind of, you know, sometimes you buy something like Harbor Freight, you go to put it together and the, the hardware is like half crapped and threaded, screwed up and you got to fight with them and it's all cheap and none of that, no, nothing missing. The paint is awesome. You bang it with something, it doesn't scratch off. 
I don't know if it's powder coat or not, but it's pretty tough. I've dropped those plates. And do anything to them on the corners. Those little stops, they just, they just pull right out. You can put the ramps on either side of it. And those little wheels just pop right off. You pull a pin out, lift it up and pull a pin out. They come right back out and it just sets the pads right back off the floor. And a couple of things that were, you know, why I decided to do what I did. You can see all the cracks that are in the floor. I'm not sure how thick the slab is over here or how good it is. So there's some of the lifts that have to bolt to the floor. Yeah, especially the, the, the two post lifts. So I kind of canceled that out. The fact that this can move around, like I, I have a second floor that I use with a forklift to access, but I could still have this whole side of it. You know, I could still work this whole side of it yet. And uh, if not, I just put the jacks on and roll this out of the way and have full access all the way across. Plus I could drive a car through here and work the lift is up. I could drive a car through this side of it. So that'll work out, <laughs> you think. Get one on the second floor. <laughs> well, I want to thank the guys at Wildfire. They uh, really hooked me up with something nice. I really appreciate it. Um, it's not the cheapest thing on the market, but I found it was the best for the money, probably the best way to put it. You got the most, uh, yeah, it's just built so much different compared to a lot of the other stuff. The way the corners are wrapped, kind of like a boom truck with the, the nylon block supporting it. A lot of the other ones, it's hollow in the center. They grab it from the center of the channel and it's, it's wobbly. I went and I looked at a car a couple of weeks ago and he had a lift at his house, kind of the same idea, but you leaned up against it and the poles, I thought the poles were gonna fall over. Yeah. So this is just much more stout and sturdy and you know, the height that it goes up, the jack on the other end of it, that jack, the. Yeah, pans that go in if you want to park something and not have it drip on the car down below. So this is definitely going to uh, help us in future videos. Plus it's easier to film. I don't have to crawl on the floor, try to get a, a light under there and a camera. I'm psyched. What a nice setup. All right, guys. <laughs> I can sit here and admire it after I turn the camera off. I'm just... Uh, really into finally having something like this. You've gone through your whole life crawling on the ground and uh, working from in the dirt and you know out in the weather to having a, a nice size garage with a lift. It's, it's really you know a change in my life compared to uh, how I grew up and what I was doing. All right guys that is it. I'm going to sign off. I want to thank you. I want to thank Wildfire. I want to thank Brad at Wildfire who is uh, my contact over there who's awesome to work with. I really appreciate it. I do not know what that noise is, <laughs> but till the next one, I'll see you. Bye.